Our lesson for today is all about the language of sets. Its definition, ways to describe it, well-defined sets, cardinality, finite, infinite, and null set. So let us begin with the definition of a set. Set is a group or collection of well-defined objects or objects which share a common characteristic. For example, the LG7 Jerome. So the set there is that particular LG. And each object in a set is called a member or an element of a set. So the member of our set earlier, which is 7 Jerome, are the students included on that particular LG. So they are the members or the elements of the set 7 Jerome. Okay. Next, we have three ways on how to describe sets. The first one is what we call descriptive method. Second, list or roster method. And the last one is what we call the set builder notation. For the descriptive method class, from the word itself, a set can be described by writing a description of its elements. Okay, so here, when we describe this set, we just need to describe it or write a description regarding its elements. We have here examples. For example, the set V, remember class, when we label a set, it should be written in a capital letter. So for example, set V, is equal to the colors in the Philippine flag. So here, we just describe the members of the, or the elements of the set V, which are the colors in the Philippine flag. And those members or elements are blue, red, white, and yellow. Okay? Another or, uh, is M, or the set M, is equal to the multiples of 6 between 1 and 400. So we have several elements, but it should be the multiples of 6. So we described our set here, multiples of 6 between 1 and 400. Let's now move on to the second one, which we call the list or the roster method. When we say roster method, it is a set that can be described by listing all its elements or members within a pair of braces. So this is the symbol for the braces. Okay? So each element is separated from the next by a comma. So we have here an example. So here, when we say the list or roster, we just need to list down all the elements in that particular set. Example, set V can be written as... Our set earlier, the colors of the Philippine flag, we have here V equals blue, red, yellow, okay, and enclosed within a pair of braces. And set M can be written as M equals, we have here 6, 12, 18, 24, and so on and so forth until 396. Remember that our set M is just between 1 to 400, meaning to say 400 is not included and 1. Okay? And the three dots here pertaining to so on and so forth or the continuation is what we call ellipsis. Next, the third one, we have here the set builder notation. So, a set builder notation, it is a set that can be described using variables. So what do we mean when we say variables? So a variable class is a symbol. Usually it is a letter that can be represented or that can represent different elements of a set. Okay. For example, all the cities in the Philippines, it can be written as... A, our set A is equal to X such that X is a city in the Philippines. Okay, or A is the set of all X 
such that X is a city of the Philippines. That's how you read it. And as you can see, the city here in the Philippines, we used a symbol or a variable to represent it, which is X. Meaning to say, all of the cities in the Philippines are represented by X. Okay? So here now is the summary of the three ways on how to describe sets. Descriptive method, just describe your set. For example, the set of positive integers in words. Okay? Listing or roster method, just list down what are those set of positive integers. And enclose it with a pair of braces. So we have here one, two, three, four, and so on and so forth. Here for the set builder notation, so we have here X. Uh, this symbol right here is being read as such that. Again, we have here X such that X is an element of. Okay, this symbol, it's like an E, pertains to element so it is an element of set of integers this is the symbol for the set of integers okay we will discuss a more of this when we go to the next topics okay so here let's read again the set builder notation x such that x is an element of all set of integers and x is greater than or equal to one meaning to say all of our x's are positive integers. It can be greater than or equal to 1. So those are 1, 2, 3, 4, and so on and so forth. Okay? We're done to the describing or the three ways on how to describe sets. Let's now move on to the well-defined sets. So here, when we say well-defined set class, for us to consider a set to be well-defined, each element of the set can be easily determined if it belongs to the set or not. Meaning to say, if there is a particular set, you would know if it is a well-defined or not. For example, math teachers in Ateneo Junior High School. So here, we can easily know or we can list down all the math teachers in Ateneo. Therefore, it is considered well-defined. Okay, if you can distinguish, if you can define, if you can list down the elements of a particular set, they can be considered as well-defined. Second one, honest politicians. Can we consider this one as well-defined? I think not. Okay, for example, for me, an honest politician, an example of that is Lenny Robredo, but for others, it's not. So we have different preferences or opinions on what or who an honest politician is, correct? So C, another popular students in school. So for example, um, Gabriel, okay, of grade 7. For me, he is popular, but for some, they don't know who Gabriel is. So therefore, he's not popular to them. So again, we have different preferences on our C, therefore, it is not well-defined. So, basically, class, when you have different opinions or preference, they are not well-defined. But you can, but if you can list down or if you can enumerate the elements of the set, just like in our example in A, the math teachers in Ateneo Junior High School, they are considered well-defined. Okay? Let's now move on to the cardinality of a set. This one is very simple. When we say cardinality of a set, it only pertains to the number of elements of a set. Okay? Examples are the set W is equal to Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. So just count the number of elements in this particular set, which is W. Therefore, the cardinality of the set W is 7. Okay? These are the days in a week. Okay? Another example is our set A. So, we have here the elements June, July, August. As you can see, if you count the number of members or elements, the cardinality of the set A is 3. 
very simple. Last is the description of the set. So we have here three descriptions of sets which we call null set, finite, and infinite. When we say null set or what we also call empty set, these are sets or it is a set with no elements okay there is no element on that particular set it is denoted by either just braces okay so this one is a set but there is no element in that set okay or this symbol okay this one is also a null set but do not mix these two or do not combine them okay that's redundant either braces or this null set okay so another is what we call the finite set when we say finite set it simply means that you can count it there is a limitation on that set it's either an empty set or a set with finite a number of elements okay for example, the number of subjects in grade 7, so we can count as that, right? So that's finite, okay? The number of weeks in a year, the number of days in a month, those are finite set, okay? 1 to 10, so it's also considered as finite set. Last one is what we call the infinite set. This one, a set with an infinite number of elements. For example the multiples of 5 5 10 15 20 and so on and so forth we all know that it is infinite okay another one is the number of your hair okay so that's also considered as infinite set the number of stars okay so they are infinite set so, for your example or your assignment class, kindly answer the following. You may just pause for you to see these items. It's only 1 to 15. Okay? And this one. Please make sure to answer them and be ready for our synchronous class next meeting. Thank you.